Hi, and welcome along to the Invincible Podcast. Whitley Judges in the building. Yeah. And no Julian. <laughs> oh, what a, what a week. What a week. <laughs> no Julian. Julian's um, currently away um, in the States, isn't he? Yeah, it? in Vegas, yeah. Yeah, I'm Vegas on business. Right, so he's unable to make it today. Um, sad? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we miss nah, him. Nah, we, we miss, miss him. him like, yeah, of course we do. Like, like an owl in the head. <laughs> <laughs> big up to Julian, big up to Julian. Um, he will be back. Um, he's back on next week's show, will not he? No, I don't and think he'll be the foot. So he's a couple of weeks away. And then I'm away. So I won't see Julian for four oh, weeks. Look at these lot, man. They're all away, innit? Yeah, it? you're not going away? Huh? Well, I've got nothing planned at the moment. Right. It's yeah. work, mate. You know I mean, oh. got the Euros coming up. Oh, got, yeah. You know, loads of stuff. Not like. People like you, you know. I mean, you you, you just swan off. So, well, you know, just, where are you going? Then? I, I, I'm I'm going to Dubai. What? No, you know, really, so. <laughs> yeah. Look, Arsenal. Eh? You know, I mean, he thinks he's the Arsenal. Uh, football like, team. You know, follow, off to Dubai. Eh? Yeah, follow the Arsenal about and then off to Dubai, like you know. So. Well, how many weeks are you gonna be out there? Then? I, 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 a couple. This couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what well, was it? Atlantis. Uh, the Atlantis. No, room, no, I'm going, I'm going to um, uh, the Royal Meridian. It oh, is the, the hotel of hotels in Dubai. See this guy, man. This is how these this is how these men are living, this, man. This is how we roll these days, Robbie. This is how he's rolling. <laughs> no, not we. You. It's how you roll. You know I mean? So you've been at Dubai. Uh, you, that's your that's your little. Home, that's how. Right? No, no. Don't no, involve no, me. No, no, it's your don't get home. me started. It. Don't put me up in your thing. You know. All oh, right. So like you know. Right. We, <laughs> we, 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 remember this because like, it'd be like where's, where's Robbie? Ah, oh, he's just gone to Dubai for four days. Like you know. We've won the sheiks. Listen, before we get stuck into everything today, if you want to be super rich like Lee Judges, <laughs> flying off to Dubai and all that every minute, right? And you're interested in, invest, in investing, um, but you find it hard to make the time to um, do it with work, family, and football, then check out eToro, a sponsor in our um, video today. Um, it's the app that makes investing simple and convenient for busy football fans like you. Now, with eToro's user-friendly app, you can manage your investments on the go. Get instant access to market data, economic calendars, and trading tools to stay on top of your investment game. eToro is more, though, than just an investment platform. It's a social community, and it really is. Use the copy trader feature to follow successful investors and learn from their strategies while building your portfolio. You can trade over 5,000 um, financial instruments, including 70 cryptocurrencies on 20 plus exchanges. Join over 30 million investors shaping their financial future with eToro. You can even use the eToro to make your practice trades so that you can have a go at it before you even commit to the real trading. So start investing with eToro today Click the link in the description and go to etoro.com slash AFTV. Don't miss out. Invest smarter right now with eToro. And you can be on trips like what Lee's doing too. <laughs> you know, fancy hotels over in Dubai and all these other destinations that he's always heading out to. Thailand, this place, that place. But no, no, <laughs> seriously. Check out etoro.com slash AFTV. Um... That looks good, that does. It does, I'm, I'm, it does. I'm, I'm interested in that myself. I think my own Download the app. Download well, we'll the app. Download the app. And uh, yeah. while I'm on the plane, I shall be uh, trading. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you can be, you know, paying for your next six yeah. uh, trips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see you laughing and that. Are you over the, you know, um, it's, yeah. it's like a few days now since, you know, it. we all officially learned that, that's it. We weren't going to win the league, missing out by two points. Um, how are you feeling now? I mean, I must admit, I felt a bit gutted on Monday. Oh, I couldn't watch any of this. I've not know, watched one bit of it. Parade stuff and Soon all that. As I, 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 anything comes on, if like, I've seen uh, uh, Pep come on, off goes the telly. Soon as the parade, off goes the telly. Like <laughs> coming down on the radio, Jack Grealish. Who I've got a lot of time for. Jack Grealish. Like was on the radio that turned it off. Can't have nothing. <laughs> yeah, wiping it from the memory, like you know. Not, not bitter at all, like. Yeah, it don't sound like you're bitter. It doesn't. Sound... <laughs> that sounds very bitter. Uh, I'm telling you. No, nah, listen. I'm. I, 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 to be honest, I'm going to be. I thought I was, but piece of it. I thought that you know it was. I, I was there, but the actual day, 
I have to say, looking back, I haven't enjoyed the game. I did. Now, Arsenal won. I've not watched Match of the Day or anything. I normally watch all of them sort of thing. I can't watch that neither. I, I found it a very, very difficult day. I didn't really enjoy the game. I didn't mm. enjoy what was going on. Um, I have to say, the atmosphere in the stadium, though, was unbelievable. Pleasure to be in there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I come out of the ground thinking it, it was that we'd lost. It was yeah. that, that sort of feeling. Yeah. I had to have a couple of beers to to soften the blow a little bit. Um, but yeah, like I, I think on on the whole of it, yeah, I'm 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 pretty okay now. Like yeah, you know. I was deflated on Monday, man. You know what I mean? Like you know what it is. I just kept thinking of all the things that could have been. Could have been, yeah. You know what I mean? You think to yourself like we could be at a parade tonight, like celebrating this team, and I'm like, no disrespect to Manchester City, and you know they do it year in year out, but. A parade with Arsenal would have been unbelievable. Yeah. You know what I mean, I think we would have got ten times the amount of people that they would have had, and it would have just been incredible for those players, you know, to be rewarded for a fantastic season, and it would have been incredible for our fans, you know. And I just had like a, I just felt bad for our fans, and I felt bad for the players. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, they've given it everything. You can't. It's a bit like. Um, you know, you, the Olympics are coming up and we'll see races in the Olympics where somebody's given absolutely everything, but they've just been pipped mm. right at the post. You know, you know what I mean? And it just felt like that, a little empty feeling, you know, that it's just like, we've done all that. We've been so good. And you end up the season with nothing, nothing to show for it. It's just like, it was just a really weird weird yeah. for me and it, it kind of took me it's a bit like yeah i mean i did watch um i did watch the game i did watch you know sort of city's game and then you know and then you know getting the trophy but that was it i didn't really i've been a bit like you after that i've not really watched much of you know their sort of celebrations and stuff like that because yeah it's just a bit gutted <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, like, you know a bit gutted. The, the, the thing in sport which is a great thing in sport is that if, you, if there's always one winner and there's always a runner up and there's always someone that comes last, you know what I mm. mean? That's how it is. Um, yeah. And you have to, you know, accept that. But you, when you turn around and say, we ain't got nothing, we ain't got nothing as, as far as the show, but we've got some fantastic memories. Yeah. Um, and some some fantastic performances along the way. Mm. Uh, and What's your best memory, like, of the... Of the season, what, what what was your what was sort of your favourite game or favourite moments or favourite things around uh, the season? Oh, that that that's that's a good question. I think like the the um, I, I, I'll say the Community Shield going back to that was good. Okay, was like the first the first mm. thing like you know, um, I, three games I think that stick out for me: um, the Man United game when. We scored Declan Rice for the last minute winner and then Jesus going for and Oh, the home that. game, yeah, that, was, game, a that was incredible. That was a brilliant game. An incredible atmosphere. Yeah. Beating Manchester City, yep. one nil was 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 fantastic as well. Uh, and I, I've got to say that Man United away, the the, the atmosphere in it. Oh, it was incredible. We, we, that was I've never experienced that, Rob. All the times I've been going to football, yeah, for thirty minutes after that game. Yeah, all the fans everybody still, in still there. There. everybody's still in there. Yeah, was was unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. There's been great, you know, some great, ga you know, West Ham away. I know you wasn't at that game. So yeah, no, I was. Uh, it, well, actually, of my experiences, like that was one of my favourite games as well. Yeah, because you obviously the, watch that game in Ghana. Yeah, one thousand fans watching it outside. Beautiful day, and. I always say, I've said the story a few times, but I said to, I nudged Cecil and I was like, before the game started, I was like, boy, I go, there's a thousand people here, man. And like, they're right up for it. And I was going, I hope the team don't let us yeah. down, man. Cause I go, West Ham away is a tricky game. I go, there's no guarantees we're going to win this game, you know? And to win it, the way we did it, six nil. And to see the, you know, the fans, how happy they were. Yeah. It just shows you like, you know, we, we always just think about the fans inside the ground, but fans around the world, the joy is the same. Yeah. And that was absolutely incredible. I'll tell you another game that I really, really liked when we beat Liverpool 3-1. Oh, yeah, one. yeah. That was, I thought, Probably our best I, performance. I think that was one of our best performances yeah. of the season because it was 3-1. The one goal that they got was a bit fortunate. Yeah. Right? But that game could have been way more. We yeah. literally 
battered Liverpool. Yeah. And you know what I mean? That's not, a, that's not a thing that happens a lot, right? And I thought that that performance, and then I loved uh, the Tottenham game. I didn't like the ending oh. of it, but the three nil up at yeah. half time. To say that is quite. I as mean, it was. That, you know, when you when you thought of that game and how m that was going to be a tough game for Arsenal, how all the Tottenham fans spoke about mm. stopping Arsenal. This is a, all we want to do: stop you lot and all that. And then to be three nil up at half time, honestly, that was like. That was, that, that was heaven. That, that was, but like, oh, I no, it, that. It, it, it turned into hell yeah. when it went to three two. But it was beautiful. That that half of football oh. was beautiful, it, and the atmosphere. And I've never seen a, a sixty thousand stadium so quiet. Yeah, it was. You like, could hear no, a pin I mean, drop apart from the Arsenal. Apart from the Arsenal fans, and uh, yeah, that, yeah, that you know, watch it. If someone has said to me, like you know. You can't watch no more football days. You can just watch the Spurs fans. Like you know, I mean, it was, it <laughs> was, a, it was, it was an absolute pleasure. That was like you know. Oh, so that has to go down there. Uh, yeah. But like you know, wherever we've gone this this year, like we've put in brilliant performances. Apart from the Fulham game, that's the only time you, you, yeah. you, you go back. Um, Chelsea five nil. Chelsea away was poor, but then like the last twenty minutes come back. You know mm. so. No, like, to beat Chelsea five nil. Yeah, you know. Um, I really enjoyed the Luton game as well. That's oh, another game. Yeah, the Luton game. That was a brilliant game. Brilliant Luton game. away. That was, yeah, a, that was a brilliant away. game with Declarado. Yeah, last week. Last week. Up, that was a great you know game. I mean? Great game. Of football, different, that different was. type of grounds yeah. and everything. Like great atmosphere. I mean, that that was great. Um, yeah. But you know what? You look at the season, and that's why I'm so gutted because, like, you look at the season, and you're like great season man I enjoyed every minute of last season mm. I enjoyed all the games I enjoyed I just enjoyed watching my team yeah that I was really enjoyed watching my team um, and it was just a joy to see the improvements that we made on last season which I enjoyed watching my team last season as yeah. well you know what I mean so and, and that's why I'm so gutted that we just ended up with nothing yeah and and, and, and we've been there when I and I'll be re you sort of um Watch a game. I don't. Know, I can't remember. Say if you lost to Liverpool, and then like you didn't really w weren't looking forward to the next game. Thinking, oh, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? As soon as we played Man United or like we we, we played Tottenham, I couldn't wait to play in the next game. Mm. Chelsea, like you know, it was oh, so exciting. It come along even even this Sunday. I couldn't wait for, to get yeah. to the game, and I'm gonna be. I don't know how everybody feels about it, but like I know you need a little bit of a summer break and all that. And sometimes I, I love my summer with the cricket, tennis, and everything mm. like that. And I used to think like oh, I don't really want the football season to start because it's going to start ruining my my weeks. Mm. But I, I honestly now want to jump the summer yeah. now and, and get to that get first straight game. back into straight it. Yeah, back because, into it. I'm you know, really, you know, yeah. really excited, I'm excited already about it. Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. I'm really. I'm, I'm. You know. Do you know those times when you'd say, "Oh, I need a break." Yeah. I need a I need a rest from the Arsenal. There was times like that. The previous the previous that's years. for the last two years, <laughs> like literally every year for about yeah, the last ten yeah, years. It was, like. but, but this year, I'm 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 ready to go again, and I'm pretty yeah. sure the players would be feeling like that as well. You know, the Euros this week. Yeah, get them out of the way. Like I'm, I'm, mm. I, I, I like the Euros and, and the World Cup, but mm. for me now, I'm, I'm like because the Euros are coming. That means it'd be quicker getting to the. Yeah. Arsenal things, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't wait for it to start again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can't wait for it to start again. And the other thing is as well is that normally um, when the season's, well, again, in years gone by, you know, even a month before the end of the season, all you're hearing about is transfer speculation and that. Nobody was talking about any of those things. No. Because we were so focused upon uh, upon the league. Um, now, obviously, we are going to be hearing about transfer speculation and that we've already started to hear you know, one or two rumours coming through. But yeah, it was just a, it was just a great season, um, in my opinion, and very unlucky to fall short to one of the all time great managers in football, which is Pep Guardiola. I mean, had it not been for him, Arteta could have won back to back mm. titles. You know what I mean? So um yeah, yeah. How yeah. do you get past him, Lee? I, I don't know, like, you know, forget about all, all the charges and everything like that. Forget about all them, like, you know, he still has to manage and still has to do what he does with, with the players that he's got. And he does it fantastically well. Mm. You know, we're, <laughs> uh, you know, it, always, it will be tarnished if, if it does come out that, but 
when you look at him as a manager. I, I look back at that Tottenham game, what he's, you know, they weren't playing that well. He, what he said at half time wins them that game going forward. You know, forget about all the other stuff that was going on. He does do those sort of things. And it's a very, very yeah. tough thing to do. But Arsenal, I think, if it, the one regret I've got, and I'm pretty, I don't know if Arteta's got the regret and whatever, I look back and go, where can Arsenal improve? What can they do to improve? Can they buy players? Can they do that? We've got to improve our home form. That yeah. has let us down this season. Yeah. It's let us down. If you look at it, um, I was thinking about this on... They only lost two now. games at home though in the league. Yeah, but other things as well, like transpire yeah. about that. And, and this is what I was thinking. I think Arsenal have got the best atmosphere at home now in the Premier League. Not being Barca, I've been to all the away games mm. this season. This season, I would say Nottingham Forest are up there with, with atmosphere. I really do. And Newcastle. That's a nice... That's a, that's I'd a like to think Newcastle, but you're so high up, you don't hear it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'd, I'd imagine that it is very good yeah, Newcastle. Yeah. It's good Newcastle. Aston Villa, I thought was a fantastic atmosphere. Yeah. Yep. Right? So they're, they're, the, they're, the, they're the ones, you know, you, like the Liverpools you expect to mm. be, be up there. But that, so we've got one of the best atmospheres in there. And you yeah, look back on it. Massive turnaround. Massive turnaround. So mm. credit to everybody, Arsenal fans and that. But our home form this season, draws to Tottenham, Fulham. I get that. The defeats against West Ham uh, uh, and Aston Villa. But also cups as well. Liverpool in the FA Cup, lost at home. You don't see Man City losing FA Cup games at home. Liverpool losing FA Cup games at home, you know? So that's something that we've got to improve on. Got to work on that, and, yeah. and, and also, if you look at the Champions League, where did we where did we fall short? Bayern Munich at home, 2-2, two, mm. two, you know? So I think that there's, those are the sort of why? games. Why, why do you think then? I, I don't, I, why do you think then we were so good on the roads? Um, I don't uh, know. At home, we were still good. We were still really good. Still, but, still, listen, you're always going to we lose weren't, a couple of games. You know, like, if you compare City's home form where they were like, literally, you can't beat them at home. Right. Yeah. I mean, what what is it? What is it we're doing wrong that leaves? It, do, do you do you think that maybe um, when we're at home, you know, we we don't have that as much control because we you know, we we're, we're looking to attack all the time? Or what, what what do you think it is? Uh, that, that that is something I'm, I hope that Arsenal and Arteta go back and look at because I'm not too sure. I, 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 there's a couple of things that I, I think about it. You know, if you, when you looked at we was here with you know. Julian's spreadsheet and all the computers all that. No, 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 it was a serious mm. thing. We had a tough running. But you were looking at it and go, where were Arsenal going to slip up? Oh, Man United away. Uh, Spurs. Spurs away. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's teams like that. You, you never thought like the home games would yeah. be like, you know, and, and you looked at Man City. Like Man City like lost three games this season, which is, is, is incredible. But all away from home, they never lost at home, and that that is something that we got to do. I, I I look at it even on Sunday. Look at the chances we create mm. and miss. When we're at when we're away from home, we we get hardly any that sort. Of, we might get three or four chances in a game, but we take them. We're more ruthless. Yeah. But at home, we seem to be missing chance after chance. If you go back to the two games, West Ham and Aston Villa, should have been home and dry before they even they yeah. scored. So it's. Being clinical at home, mm. uh, I, and I, and I, I always feel a little bit more like when I know we're not in so much control at home. I, I don't know if you feel that like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, like 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 we, we we tend to get done on the counter a lot more at home, even sometimes um, where it hasn't led to anything. Um, but we've been done on the counter attack at home, and I just think at home we seem to be way way more attacking at home and sometimes sort of forget our defensive duties. Yeah. Whereas away from home, we seem more structured, more organised, more, you know, um, and I think that's one of the reasons why at home. But, I, and I do think that what you say there is completely true. We don't take our chances as well at home mm. because those games that we lost, you know, um, and drew, were games where we didn't take our chances. You know, yes. we weren't ruthless enough. So, yeah. And again, that might boil down to, you know, a lot of people saying we need a striker. Is that when we need a clinical striker at home to, you know, when some of those chances present themselves, we take it? I don't know, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, definitely, I think you are right. We need to we need to work on our home form. Um, that definitely needs to improve. I'll tell you the other thing as well. I don't know, this has been bugging me a little bit since 
Well, I think we had a great season. We had an incredible season, but we have fallen short, right? It will kind of be coming with, I did an interview mm. after the game with Yardman, right? And we know that Yardman can be very controversial <laughs> in that. <laughs> Right, and he was basically saying, well, basically in a nutshell, he was saying that he'd sack Mikel Arteta um, and bring somebody else in because um, he he doesn't think he's the guy who can get us over the line. I was quite surprised, even in the comments, there's a few people backing him and saying, oh yeah, I find it crazy. Mm. I find it crazy, I really do. I said, I said to him in the interview, and I still stand by it now, right? I find it crazy that there are people who are saying that they would get rid of the manager. I think he's done an unbelievable job at Arsenal. We have challenged for the league two years in a row now. We challenged for the league last year. All right, you can say we capitulated towards the end, but we challenged. We pushed Manchester City. This season, we did an even better... We ch in, if it weren't Pep Guardiola, we would have won the league, right? And yet still, people are questioning the manager. I mean, I find it crazy. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about it, you know what I mean? But to me, we have got right now, uh, next to Pep Guardiola, the next, next best manager in this league, especially now that Klopp mm. has officially left, is Mikel Arteta. Why would we want to change him? Unless we're getting Guardiola, why would we want to change him? It's mad. Listen, I find it in incredible at the moment, like, you know, and, and listen, there was a time, I, 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 if you want to be really honest about it, he's very, very fortunate to have got the Arsenal job in the first place. I see like set, uh, people are mentions with, with other clubs at the minute and they're going, oh, he's not he's not experienced enough to go to Chelsea. Or he's not experienced enough to go to Man United. Or he's not experienced. You know, Mikel was very, very fortunate to get the job. The owners. They but saw something they in him. They see something in him, um, which I didn't see in the first couple of seasons. It was, it was horrendous, you know what I mean? Losing games and whatever but and and, and the, you know two year ago or, or three year ago whenever it was when he was bottom of the league and if if he would have been sacked I, I would have said hands up fair enough it hasn't worked but they backed him they backed him to where they are now you're up against this machine that you're up against you know uh, and all of a sudden it's Arsenal um, and uh, Mikel were getting criticised they've won four, tri four times on the spin you know, may, maybe, maybe like, maybe City are a bit better than us at this moment in time. Maybe they've got, and, and they have, they've got better centre forward than us at this moment in time. They've got better goalkeeper than us at this moment in time. But one thing you have to say is that, and this is the one thing I'll say, anybody, okay, Arsenal, 134 years, I think, we've won the league 13 times. And the, I've got people turn, turning around and going, well, if he doesn't win the Champions League or the title, He's got to go. Well, Arsenal Football Club never won the Champions League, right? And as you say, like 13 times we've won the league. You know, so it's a bit bit much pressure to put in. I will go along with it that he's got to improve on trophies and, mm. and you know, like our domestic sort of cup competitions, he's got to improve on. But to say like, oh no, get rid of him, after what he's just done to this football club, what he's just, what he's just given us, I've got hope, I've got belief I've got belief. That we can go on and win the league. <coughs> I don't know if that's going to pan out. Pep Guardiola is still going to be here. So still going to be, be there, you know what I mean? Still going to be really tough, but we're challenging. Jurgen Klopp, one of the best managers that this Premier League has ever seen, right? Was there for nine years. Yeah. Was absolutely brilliant for Liverpool. Only won the league once. Was challenging literally all of those years. I think only really... And he had... Last year he didn't really challenge, but he was challenging for a lot of those years but he only won it once yeah, yeah. <laughs> because of the team he's up against. They hit one year, they got 97 points. Yeah. They still didn't win the league. Uh, people right? say, like, there was a, a question which will be thrown at you. Well, if we don't win nothing, right, um, the players are going to leave. The players are not going to, you know, you're going to lose Saki, you're going to lose Saliba and all that. Jurgen Klopp took on Manchester City with the prime at his very, very best in... Um, Salah. Salah. At his very, Mane, very best Mane. At his very, very best Flamina. They never left. They, you know, only when Liverpool wanted them to leave. You mm. know what I mean? Like, he needed to, Refresh to, it, to yeah. freshen it up a little bit. They went toe-to-toe. -to -toe I, I never, ever once 
heard anybody turn around and say Liverpool bottlers, Liverpool bottling this or bottling that or whatever, like, you know what I mean? There was an admiration from me, you know what I mean? Mm. So I look at it now when people want to have a go at Arsenal, it's a little bit of jealousy. Yeah. It's a little bit of jealousy because it's not them. You know, I always look at Liverpool and go, if Liverpool can do it, then Arsenal can do it, right? Because we've not got the same structure as what Man City have got and, and, what, and Chelsea have yeah. got. So you look at Liverpool and you think, well, we can do that because they've done it. Now it seems like the teams that are not challenging are going, well, there's no excuse because Arsenal have not got the finances of, of, a, of a Manchester City and a Chelsea and look what they're doing. Mm. And like Chelsea have come back into the pack now, like, you know. Mm. So um, it, it is incredible, like, you know, that you, you've got a manager that's, for, for the last two seasons has took on a, a team that's won four titles on the spin never been done before in the history of English football forget mm. about the Premier League in history of football no to Alex Ferguson who dominated football with big money went Man United if they wanted to go they were paying I don't know how long ago 30 million for Rio Ferdinand 30 million mm. for another player I don't know how many years ago that was but that 30 million would be about 100, 100 million yeah. pound now yeah. in, in, in terms of what it was yeah. and he didn't do it but all of a sudden you're expecting a manager like you know with not the same sort of resources doing it the right doing it fairly doing it in the realms of, of the mm. rules you know what I mean um, and people are slagging him off it's bad enough other fans slagging him off. It's but, crazy. But our own fans as well, like, you know what I mean? I asked Yard Man, I said to him, I go, all right, who would you get? Right? If you got rid of um, Mikel Arteta because you say he ain't a guy that could get us over the line, who would you bring in? He answered by saying, well, uh, by the way, I'm not having <laughs> Yeah, have a game. Like, <laughs> because because it's, 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 you can, listen, he's entitled to his opinion, right? And I respect that. But he couldn't tell me who he'd replace him with. Now I look at it at the moment, right? And I say, that's it. We've got a great, we've got a very, very good manager, right? Maybe not great. You've got to win the ultimate things first. But we've got a very, very good manager, right? Who's doing a very, very good job. He's improving every player that plays under him, right? I'm looking at, like, teams at the moment that need managers. I'm looking at Bayern Munich. A big club like Bayern Munich are getting Vincent Company, right? Are trying to get Vincent Company from Burnley who just got relegated. Vincent Company, who done brilliantly in the championship to bring Burnley up, but showed a lot of inexperience last year um, in the Premier League, you know, because Burnley did spend a bit of dough, unlike the other two mm -hmm. um, teams that came up, right? And he just didn't have the experience. He, he, he lost a lot of games through, I think, inexperience because he didn't adapt to the Premier League. He should have realised that you can't, you know, you're not going to go and try and play Man City off the park or Arsenal off the park or when he played Spurs and that. But yet still, Bayern Munich are looking to bring him in. That's because there's not a load of top, top quality managers around at the moment. I'm looking at, um, you know, uh, Chelsea at the moment, which, by the way, I can't get my head around why they've sat Pochettino, Ooh. but they have. They're looking at guys like Kieran McKenna um, at Ipswich. What? So who would Arsenal, you know, all these guys are saying, if you got rid of Arteta, who would they be looking at? Because when you look at the pool of managers that are available or the pool of managers that teams are looking at right now, I don't see these huge names out there. And even when the huge names have come in, mm. like somebody said to me, yeah, but we should get somebody like an Ancelotti. I was like, well, I had to remind the guy, guy Ancelotti was at Everton. Yeah. With a lot of money. Remember, that was the time when Everton was spending. Didn't right, it, did they? And they were poor. It's not as easy as that. You've got to get a manager that comes in, changes the culture, and that's what he's done. He's changed the culture. He's changed everything about Arsenal. He's gotten a mindset of this team into a mindset of winning. They want to win the league, and they've challenged two years in a row. It, we would be crazy. Put it this way, if, if, if tomorrow... Arsenal turned around and said, you know what, Arteta, you're gone. I'm telling you, he'd have clubs queuing up, big clubs, queuing up across Europe to take him. If Bayern Munich are taking Vincent Company, do you not think they'd, get, they'd want Arteta? 100%. Do you not think Barcelona, if Xavi was to leave Barcelona, do you telling me that Barcelona would not be in for Mikel Arteta? 
we got to be very, I mean, listen, I, and I know this is not the majority. The majority of fans, you can tell, but in the stadiums, around the world, everybody, they're behind Mikel Arteta. There is a small portion. It is a small portion. But I'm telling you, be careful, right? Yeah. Because we've got a top manager. And, it, and he, I get the thing where people say on domestic trophies, but are you telling me if Arsenal only won the League Cup and didn't, you know, had a poor season in the league, they'd still be saying that because they'd be like, ah, oh, what's the League Cup? Because I remember, I remember fans used to say that even when Wenger was yeah. there. Yeah, he won the FA Cup. Yeah, well, I want the League. Yeah. The League I want, right? You know what I mean? And domestic trophies is really hard, right? Because all trophies are hard because it's the luck of the draw a lot of yeah. times. If you, you know, last season, the FA Cup, Man City away we got. Liverpool, that was there. People Liverpool forget that. Well, so when you when people turn around and say, "Oh, look, such and such got to the final," what was their draw? Well, United have had a very easy run to the FA Cup final, apart from the Liverpool game, which was at home, right? And credit to them because we did lose to Liverpool. Credit to United for getting there, but they've had a very easy run to that FA Cup final. They even had Coventry in the semis. You know, cup runs sometimes you got to look at who you've had to play. Right, And at the start of the season, when you spoke to most Arsenal fans, I'd say if you spoke to 90% of Arsenal fans, and it was, it was interesting because we even did, um, and go and check that video out on AFTV, and we had a little thing where we looked back at our predictions around Arsenal for the season, like with players and what we do and that. Very, very, very few people said that we would get any further than the quarterfinals, mm. right? I know my prediction when it was right, we did it the other day, a bit of spoiler alert, right? When I was asked, I said, I think, I think we could get to the quarterfinals. But to win it, pff, this is our first year back in it in seven years. That's what other people are forgetting as well. We're going to come up against very experienced teams, that might, which we proved to be, even against Porter, we saw how difficult that was. Where did we get to? We got to the quarterfinals. Now, now all of a sudden people saying, oh, why could we, we need somebody to win it? What? Really? It's the first time we've been back in it for seven years. Yeah, yeah, what, are we just going to bounce in it and win it like that? Come on, man. Get Xavi Alonso, he'd win it. Europa League final. You know, as great as Xavi Alonso's Bryn. Got he's been out. absolutely amazing. Europa League final comes up against a top manager in Gasparini. Lost 3-0 in the final. It can happen. Doesn't say he's not a, no. a, a, a top talented manager. But for all those people who were saying, go get Alonso, it's not an instant thing like that. Xavi Alonso has done brilliantly in the Bundesliga. Absolutely amazing what they've achieved, the amount of games they've won, invincible season. But ain't no Pep Guardiola in the Bundesliga. Nah. And uh, remember, when he was in the Bundesliga, he won everything in that as well. So we just got to be... That's my opinion. I, I, I think we've got the guy. We got him. I, 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 I think we have as well and, and you know people say to me are, are, you, are you a lover of art I'm not a lover of art Arteta no, I'm not madly in love with him as, as I, I love him as a manager as, as Arsene Wenger and I'll tell you why no no it's just, well, that, yeah, Wenger's a different uh, level I, I, because I, I, you know I, I wasn't a lover of George Graham I was a, a respected him and all that because George Graham made decisions that I didn't, I didn't go along with. You know what I mean? Got mm. rid of Charlie Nicholas, the swine. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, it was the right thing. The right. I think Arteta again has been making ruthless decisions with the Ramsdale um, uh, Raya one. I, I'm, I, I'm not fully on board with that. But at the end of the day, he's making decisions that perhaps I don't agree with or whatever. But they're for the, what he feels are the right. They'd be right, though, isn't it? Raya won the right. Golden Glove. You know what I mean? So you, you, you have to turn around and go. Oh, yeah, there is. On the on the on the flip side, I do I do think that there's been, that he's made mistakes. Of course he has. I felt like last season, if you look back at that Manchester City game, we goes up there with Manchester City uh, on a good roll at that time, and he plays a weakened team against Manchester City. We lose one 0 and things start to go wrong. Like if he'd have put out a stronger team, who knows? West Ham this you season. You learn from that. You it? learn from it. West Ham this season, poor performance. He learn from it. So I, I and I do think that he that he is learning from certain things. And as you go on to the Champions League, this is the first season that we've had to play Champions League in, in his managerial ten, tenor, Champions League and Premier League. And all right, he might he fell short in that game against Barcelona and Sevilla. He will learn from that. Bayern. Uh, sorry, Bayern. Yeah. He will learn from that. And I'll tell you this now. 
I believe that if Pep does go, I bet there's a call from Manchester City. Oh, they'd be interested in Arteta. They, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they will be. Listen, Mikel Arteta must be, you know, every top club around Europe will be interested in Mikel Arteta. They probably won't move for him because they they he's at a big club at like Arsenal. He's doing really well. He's got they're giving him resources. They're backing him. So probably a lot of clubs are like, there's no point in trying to make an inquiry about him. Although Barcelona, remember, were interested mm. in him. But to me, we have the guy, and I mean, he's made a lot. Like you said, he's made decisions where, at the time, like Havertz at the start of the season, everybody's like, yeah, bro, Havertz. And look how that's turned out. He guy's been brilliant. Raya. Look, that's, you know what I mean? Um, we all love Ramsdale, but we have to say there's a calmness mm. with Rhea in the goal in the way he wants to play and Rhea won the Golden Glove. So you've got to say that's been vindicated as well. You know what I mean? He, he's he's uh, made... Declan good. Rice a better player. Declan Rice, you know, Xhaka went... I, I was saying this to, um, the other day. Xhaka went, everyone was like, why do you let Xhaka go? Oh. He's literally out. Declan Rice has played two positions this season. Yeah. <laughs> At one time, he's playing Thomas Partey's role because Partey's been out. Then when Partey's come back, he's been doing, he's, he's been doing the Xhaka role. He's, he's, you know, his signings have been good. You can see that all the players are right behind him. They're right behind him. They're, they're right behind what he's trying to do. I think he's been really, really good. And, you know, when people say, oh, yeah, but, you know, he's been here for a couple of seasons. But you've got, the, the Arsenal are in such a mess. <laughs> Such a mess, right? That it was always going to take two to three seasons. And, and then I had to remind a guy the other day that I was talking to, he's going, well, you know, what was that? How many years now? I said, last year, right? Did you expect Arsenal to be challenged for the league? He said, no, I didn't. So I said, so does that not show then? He challenged last year for the league. That means he was ahead of schedule, mm. right? Because you just said you didn't expect him to challenge for the league last season. He was saying to me, no, to be honest, because all I wanted like, is to see if we could get into the top four last season. I said, no, but he nearly won the league last season. So he's ahead of schedule, but yet still you're saying to get rid of him. Yeah, it's just, I don't, honestly, no. It's... I've heard a lot of people say, oh, like, yeah, get rid of him. Who are you going to have him? Thomas Tuchel, yeah? All right. Do you, well, imagine, do you imagine if Ar Mikel Arteta would have done that decision, what he'd done against um, Real Madrid? Last week, yeah, five minutes. Do you imagine what? what Taking all, off Kane if, and that, if, yeah. if Mikel Arteta had done that, there'd be mm. carnage. Getting Thomas Tuchel has just had a season where you know he's managing Bayern Munich, the biggest club in Germany, yeah, and hasn't won. got them over the line. Hasn't won. Um, hasn't got them over the line. First time they've not won the league in what is it, 10, yeah. 11 years? But people will prefer first having. time. First time they haven't even won anything. They didn't win the league. They didn't win the cup. They didn't um, win anything. Also, Thomas Tuchel. You know, when he was at Chelsea, he was nowhere near winning it. I know he won the Champions League. Mm. And even then, as I said, winning the Champions League is, is, is a massive feat. But it's, we know in cup competitions... You need a little bit of luck. But the league is a real test of what you want to see your manager week in, week out. Thomas Tuchel in his time at Chelsea got nowhere near winning the league. He wasn't even close. He didn't come second, didn't come third. He was nowhere near it. Mm. Nowhere near winning the league. If Thomas Tuchel was in charge before Pochettino came in, right? They weren't even in the in in the um, any European competition. That's who people want to go and get. And and, and I've been. I, I think Arsenal have always been a, a a club since I've been following them. Of you know, like had a couple of managers early doors: Terry Neal, Don L before they got Jules Graham. You know, then Jules Graham for a long time, then Arsene Wenger for a long time. You know, I've mm. always, I, I, I don't want us to become a Chelsea. Just, yeah, just chopping and changing. Just chopping and changing. I, I feel that when, when the, if it's right, it's right, and you do it all right, you know. But Arsenal has shown complete and utter faith in a manager that, that I, I'm being honest, at one stage, if someone would have said to me, do you remember when we lost to, I think we lost at home to Burnley, we, you mm. know what I mean? We lost to Everton at home. And that's when we was doing the um, the watch alongs in the fifth. If you yeah. turned around to me and said, "In two years' time, Arsenal will be challenging with a title," or come, to I said, "No way! Yeah. Under this manager, it's going to ever happen." Now I don't know who see that, who envision, envisaged, visualised that. I don't know who that was, but whoever it was, 
was unbelievable. Only now, backed him. There's a lot of there's a lot of fans out there. Oh, well, I backed Arteta all the way and everything like that. Did you or did you just keep quiet? You know what I mean? There's a difference. You know what mm. I mean? Like I ain't saying nothing. No, at like, one you know stage, I mean? listen, he was like, I think Cecil was saying it the other day. It was that game against Norwich. <laughs> it's when we started that season where. We lost our first three games. Which, one, by the way, yeah. they were difficult games. They were difficult right? games. Because, you know, the first game away at Brentford, we were co ravaged with COVID, um, players missing. Then we had to play, I think we played Chelsea. Chelsea, Man, Man City. City. Yeah, so, you know, on paper. And we lost to Brentford. So we lost to Brentford away. Chelsea, Chelsea at home. home. Man City away. Yeah. We're going into that game against Norwich. Norwich. I was thinking, if he loses this, yeah, he's going to be... <laughs> This could be tough for him. And he made some difficult decisions. I remember that. in that game, we didn't play that great either. No. Won, I think it was 1-0. One 1-0, nil, one we, nil, we straight through, yeah. Right? And then after that game, then he started to get it together and we recovered the season. But I just think we've got the right guy. I, I look at clubs at the moment. They're trying to follow our model. Mm. <laughs> United, with Ten Hag, you listen to their fans and they say, well, look at Arsenal. They stuck with Arteta. They think, let's you know, give this guy a chance. <laughs> They're following Arsenal's model. You're looking at Chelsea at the moment. They're looking at guys like Kieran McKenna, as I said, at Ipswich. And people are thinking, well, why would Chelsea, I'm not saying they're going to get him, but they're going, why would Chelsea go after Kieran McKenna? Even United have been linked with him. And play, Why? Why? Because they're thinking about Arsenal. Mm. How they fought out of the box and they went and got Arteta, who's the number two at um, City. Leicester City, who'd just been promoted. Yeah. Looked to Arsenal again and said, you know what? Worked for Arsenal. We're going to go and get City's number two as well. They went and got um, that uh, number two manager from City, brought him in, right? You know? Being linked with And now the guy's gotten promoted from the... He's mm. gotten promoted. He's been linked with Chelsea. A lot of teams are looking at the model and saying to themselves, all right, well, it's not just all about going out there and getting that nailed on established manager which, by the way, we've seen teams do that, and it ain't worked, Tottenham. The Tottenham went and got Conte. How did that work out? They went and got Jose Mourinho. Everybody looking at it and thinking, well, they've got these guys nailed on trophies. Didn't work. So a lot of teams are looking at the model that Arsenal have done in bringing in Mikel Arteta and mm. saying that's the way to go. So to me, as I said, it just seems nuts to anybody right now and listen, you can have your opinion, but this is my thinking, to be even thinking about anything to do in with changing a guy that, to me, is doing a fantastic job, that has rebuilt this club, that we were at the start of this video saying how proud we were, we yeah. were looking forward to next season, and that, and ain't, as you said right at the start, that ain't always been the case that we've been looking forward no, to. No, no, exactly that. And, 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 and a great, a great, a, a, I'll tell you what, a, a great question was, was given to me the other day. So when, when do you start looking at Mikel Arteta to be under pressure to start, to, you know, on that? And I said, I don't know when that is, but I'll tell you when it's not, is now. Yeah. It's not now. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult thing. It's the a thing difficult is, thing. You know, it, it's, along the line, it's going to come. Yeah. Guardiola's here at the moment, man. It's tough for every manager. It's tough for every manager. Like, you know, we've just had a great, I think, you know, you speak to any Arsenal fan, they say, fantastic season. Fell short. Guardiola. You know, listen. Um, Liverpool, as we said, it's, it's tough. Uh, you know, I, I, I know someone that's in the game who's a coach and everything like that and, and turned around to me when we play Chelsea. He was watching the game, turned around and said, You don't realise how good, because I was moaning like one, you know what I mean? Like, I think it was, no, I think it was, uh, it was 1 0 up against Chelsea at half time. He said, You'll win this 4 or 5. I said, no, don't be silly, you know, it's not like that. He went, You don't realise, because you're in it, you don't realise how good a side Arsenal are. When you're outside of it, yeah, you go around the country, you go and ask, yeah, yeah, supporters yeah. they go oh you've got a good side Yeah, why are they having a go why are Man United fans having a go at us at the moment and all that like you know what I mean why because they know we're a good side Yeah, they, they know and and I, I I listened to that and I thought well you know what I mean we ended up winning the game 5-0 mm. you know what I mean and, and so I I, I think because you're in it it's like when you're watching the game against 
Tottenham, we're panicking for that 20 minutes and all that. And when you go back and look at it, mm. we was always in control of that game. There was a couple of mistakes. Mm. But you don't realise it because you're in it. You're in it. You don't mm. realise. But listen, people slagged off Arteta. Look what he's doing. Look what he's doing with Saliba. You know, putting him out on loan and all that. Like, you know, don't you think that was the right decision that they that they done? Yeah. Prove right. Yeah. You know, what I mean, people were saying, you know, what's he dick doing getting rid of Guendouzi? Like, you know, what I mean, I liked mm. him by the way. Like, mm. you know, what I mean, prove right. A Bamiang. A Bamiang. Prove right. Prove right. You know. His decisions have been good. You know, I mean, yes, he's going to make a few. Bought him Ben White. So it's a Ben White, fifty million. Yeah, that was another one. Prove right. Of course, you're going to get a few wrong. Like someone will jump. Someone will be jumping in the comments now, going, "What about Lukonga? What about Vieira and all that?" There's always, always a few that you're not going to get right. You know, I mean, that's that the part, part and parcel of football. Yeah, not everything's going to go go your way, but the majority you've got to get right. And the manager's success not only comes from from what they're doing on the park and whatever. It does come from transfers as well. Yeah. What you're doing, you know, can be the be I the, saw something the, the other day that they said we've got one of the most valuable teams around. Around there, right? yeah, I think we Whereas have. Whereas we used to have a... I couldn't think, get rid of one, couldn't, nothing, yeah, money for nothing. Give our players away. Couldn't give them we away. Give them away. We had to give them away. We had to give them away. We had to give players away. Yeah, I mean, if you said to you, why don't we sell him? We've got out for how much? I mean, no one's buying him. You know what I mean? He's got a contract. He's on like 300 grand a week. He's got about 10 years left on it. I mean, you know, oh, that's a bit of exaggeration. But, you know, now we've got players that are worth. So even if we want to move on a player, you know, and certain players will probably move on this summer, they're worth something. They're not just either we're giving them away or we're having to make their contracts run down so they leave on a free to get rid of their wages. Mm. We've got players that are worth money. So, no, it's moving in the right direction for me. And I, I, I'm already looking forward, like you, Lee, to the next season. We fell short, um, but we go again. Yeah, like, you know, and that's how you've got to be. I, I, listen, I, Arsenal, two years ago, right, if you'd have said, <laughs> you can do a show, you can do in the street, you could be in the pub. Where, where are you going to come? Uh, where are you going to come in the league? Well, I reckon we're going to win it. You'd have been laughed at. Everybody would have been laughing at you, right? You, you say this summer, like, do you think you can win the league? Yes. I, I do. No one is going to laugh at you or mm. me for saying, do you know what? Arsenal can win the league this year. About season. the last 15 years, it's just all we've been up, up until the last two years, it's just been about top four. Now, we haven't nobody, celebrated top four the last yeah, two years. Probably. Nobody mentions top just four. Just gone now. straight into it. We haven't, have you cel- did yeah. you celebrate getting top four no. this year? No. Did you celebrate it last year? No. I, I walked out of Tottenham Stadium when they beat us that, that day 3 0. I mention it. And they were all celebrating, going mad. It was all on the concourse and all that, like, Champions League, Champions League, you know what I mean? Like, you know, last two years, we've not done that. No. We've no. not done that. We did, we, we did in the, I remember going to Newcastle, do you remember when we yeah, won yeah, one yeah, deal because yeah. uh, Shelby yeah, yeah. scored? It was like a big thing. Yeah, big thing because we got into the oh, Champions League. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know, <laughs> everybody going like, you know, yeah. it's also a big thing that we pipped Tottenham to it yeah. as well. I get that. But that that was what it that's what it was like, you know. Yep. So, you know, I remember, you know, people talk about uh, Lasagna Gate and all that. Like, they weren't to win the league, by the way. Yeah. It was to get top four. <laughs> to get top four, right? That's celebrating because, <laughs> uh, you know, like, you know, yeah. well, fa- thank you West Ham, thank you West Ham. Yeah. Now we ain't even celebrating it because, like, you know, I don't even know. Tell me the date when Arsenal got top four. I don't even remember it. Like, you know, know what I mean? It was done. But it, we're we're in a we're on a different road now, yeah. and, f- and and that is whether you like him or you don't, is because of Mikel Arteta, He's Edu, and the rest of the, yeah, the rest fantastic. of the board. Look fantastic. at Cronky now, like you know what I mean, Josh Cronky. Now, people having photos with him and shaking his hand now, like you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> to kill him before. You can't. You, and and and, you and you've got change. to give them a lot of credit of as well because do. they've backed the manager. They bought Declan Rice in a hundred million last season. They have backed him. They've gone with his decisions, right? And, you know, they got to take a lot of credit as well, yeah. actually. You know what I mean? We, they got dissed hard over the years, and quite rightly so a lot of times. But the last couple of years, they've also been brilliant. And I'm excited to see how they're going to back him this summer as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, listen. Uh, just one more thing. Another yeah. thing that I've got to say about it, like Declan Rice, I've got to say this. Um, I loved it. Loved it that he was upset and didn't look like he was enjoying mm. The endless thing, you know what I mean? People yeah. going, he's sulking. He weren't sulking, he's hurting. 
because he's he's a winner. Yeah, and that's what and uh, what Sometimes his emotions was what I was feeling. Yeah, and if you've got players showing the same emotion as what you are as a fan. That is what you, you. That is what you want. That the manager said, "Mikel Arteta said, said don't, um, we're not satisfied." With nah, this. and I, I, that's what you want. That's and I what think you want. at the end of it, uh, when you've got a manager and a player, and you see players hurting as much as. Do you know what that was a thing like years ago? Do you remember when you would go away from go? Players don't care. They don't yeah. hurt like I do. I see Declan Rice on that pitch. You know, he had his family on there. Uh, he's mm. had a wonderful, wonderful first season. I don't know any player mm. that's had a better season, first season for Arsenal than signing. You know what I mean? With mm. all the pressure that come for you. Got so much admiration for the way yeah, he's played. Brilliant. But he was feeling it like I was. That's what yeah. you want. Yeah. Listen, we come to the end of the podcast today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we're going to be back right throughout the summer, even though on occasions Lee... We'll be off on holiday, but no, we'll be back. I'll tell you what, well, uh, was your last, I think Cecil was here last week when he was Cecil. Cecil went. Oh, yeah, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> just saying, you know, and also we've got to do it. I just want to say we've got to do it a, a couple of days early because you're off to Amsterdam next week. Like, is that right? That's with work. I'm ah. working. Well, you didn't ask if I was going over. You just, you know, I might be going over there for work. Actually, right? just to tell people about that, we're going to be um, at the Soccer X conference. Um, AFTV um, going to be at Soccer X conference and also DR Sports. So make sure you check that out. That's next week over in Amsterdam. We're going to be doing loads of content from out there. Um, and also, um, don't forget eToro. As I mentioned it um, earlier on in the show, if you want to invest, eToro is the one for you. Just download the app right now. The link is in the description. Um, and uh, get involved in eToro. It's a great way to invest. And as I said, you want to be flying out every minute like Lee. Get on it. Get the app. I'm, 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 get on it. I'm downloading it as soon as we finish. <laughs> Lee, thank you very much. Um, thank you to you guys. And we'll be back next week. The Invincible Podcast. Myself, Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion, brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.